Next month, Alan Partridge makes his big screen debut in Alpha Papa. We dispatched our resident comedian, A.B. Philbin Bowman, to look back at some of Partridge's best, worst moments. Comedy characters on British television have a shorter life expectancy than Baltimore drug dealers in The Wire. The infamous Basil Fawlty and his clueless waiter Manuel only survived for 12 half-hour episodes. The cringe-inducing boss, David Brent, lasted a similar 12 episodes and struggled on for a gallant two-part Christmas special before disappearing from our screens. So as we brace for Alpha Papa, the new Alan Partridge movie, it's worth celebrating the longevity of a comedy creation who's been with us since 1991. Just as Queen Elizabeth II has sat on the British throne during the reign of 13 UK Prime Ministers, Alan Partridge has perched in his pear tree while one of the most successful character comics of his generation, Sasha Baron Cohen, has morphed from an unknown actor to a wannabe rapper. Wicked, I is here with Lord Inlet, he be the head of Christie's and he knows everything about art and thing. So is art more about drawing or is it more about colouring in? To a Kazakhstani reporter. In US and A, if you want to marry a girl, you cannot just go to her father's house and swap her for 15 gallons of insecticide. To a gay Austrian fashion icon. Isham like cocaine. I'm white and addictive, and a lot of guys leave the bathroom with me all over their face. And most recently, to a Middle Eastern dictator. Ah, America, the birthplace of AIDS. The key to Alan Partridge's success is that, like another British cultural institution, David Bowie, he has continually reinvented himself. Alan Gordon Partridge was supposedly born on April 2nd, 1955, in Norwich. In reality, Partridge first appeared on radio and television as a hapless sports presenter in the early 1990s. I'm Alan Partridge. Hello. Rally driving. The championship starts tonight, but here's what I got up to this morning. Ah, you join me with Susie Herper, one of this Britain's top lady rally drivers. Um, Susie, you're going to be uh, subjecting me to some atrocious punishment. What's that? <laughs> well, I'm going to take you around the course uh, that I won the rally on recently. Right, fantastic. And uh, the stickers, what are the stickers for? Um, advertising. It's as simple as that? Yeah. Really is that simple. From there, the team decided to put Partridge centre stage and give him his own spoof chacho complete with poorly scripted introductions. Now, Hollywood is much, much more than nine big letters on a hill. <laughs> it's... It's a sexy, dangerous place, a hustling, wheeling, dealing kind of town where money talks and nonsense walks. <laughs> I've never been there, but my next guests have, because they are a British married couple of actors who live and work in Tinseltown stateside. An irritating catchphrase. Knowing me, Alan Partridge, knowing you, Tonya Belmont, aha. And painfully awkward flirtation with guests. Now, you're one of those great actresses who, if the role demands it, you're quite prepared to expose yourself. Well, I'm glad you value my acting so highly. I do. Your name attached to a film is a, is a seal of quality. It's a, it's a guarantee that says... Come along, see the film, lads. You won't go home empty-handed. So just... <laughs> After six episodes in a Christmas special, titled Knowing Me, Knowing You, the team swung in a different direction. Instead of giving Partridge a second series of his chat show, they thought it would be funnier to deny him the series and then follow his life as it spiralled downwards into the absurd and self-aggrandising foothills of very minor celebrity. In one typical scene, Alan attempts to impress a couple of big shots from Irish television played by the real-life creators of Father Ted, Arthur Matthews and Graham Linehan. I'm um, big fans of all the Irish stuff. Um, <laughs> yep. I love your pop music, Enya, and uh, the other one ripped up the Pope, Bald Chap. <laughs> and I think that's it. Well, it's you, you too, of course. Yeah, you you, well, yeah, oh, fantastic. Sunday, bloody Sunday. What a great... It really encapsulates the frustration of a Sunday, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You wake up in the morning, you, you, you've got to read all the Sunday papers, the kids are running round, you've got to mow the lawn, wash the car, and you think, Sunday, bloody Sunday. For two seasons, Partridge repeatedly tried and failed to relaunch his career. Then actor Steve Coogan took a break from Partridge to focus on Hollywood film roles. But in 2010, Partridge resurfaced, hosting a show called Mid Morning Matters on North Norwich FM. In one typically awkward scene, Partridge becomes the interlocutor, 
between a British Special Forces agent who describes killing a group of terrorists in Afghanistan and a young female caller trying to make sense of what she's just heard. Did they get better? We cleared the cave. No. No, no one survived, Sophie. He cleared the cave. And when the man hurt the other men, did the man feel bad? Did you feel bad? It's my job. No, he didn't feel bad, Sophie. Did the man get into trouble? No, because it this no, because the government allows him to kill people. Sometimes when the government's exhausted diplomatic means, they allow state sanctioned killing. Arguably Alan Partridge's most interesting appearance is in the twenty eleven series The Trip. Here Steve Coogan and fellow comic actor Rob Bryden appear as fictionalized versions of themselves. Coogan portrays himself as an actor consumed by ambition, frustrated at his lack of career success. In one scene, he's welcomed with open arms to Hollywood by an enthusiastic Ben Stiller. But a moment later, Coogan awakes from this dream in a grey hotel room in the north of England. Throughout the trip, Coogan's character traits are all eerily reminiscent of Alan Partridge. Both are ambitious, frustrated, irritable and somewhat delusional. While Steve Coogan may be more self-aware than his alter ego, he's in the awful position of being trapped by his own creation. Coogan dreams of becoming a heroic Hollywood leading man, but he keeps being offered work as a vain, pathetic, failed chat show host from Norwich. In one of the most telling scenes, Coogan sits down to dinner with Rob Brydon and two attractive women. When Coogan takes himself seriously, Bryden twists the conversation using Alan Partridge as ammunition to mock Coogan and remind him of the limitations of his career. I've got proper walking gear. I've got, you know, crampons. Oh, I'd like to go for a nice ramble, Lynn. I have oh, hell boots. Well, Lynn. I have... Oh. Uh, I have uh, Lynn, Lynn, where are my crampons? <laughs> Why have you brought tampons? That's not what I said. <laughs> no, you fool. Crampons. Oh. Yeah, that's good. You you could have written for the show because it's clearly it's so up there with the best stuff. Yeah. I'd love to quote your own stuff back at you, but I, I just don't know any. No. Odd, because you were executive producer on a lot of it. <laughs> and I still don't know any. You never were that's that attentive at work, were you? The truth is most of us, like Alan Partridge, want to be better, more successful people. And most of us, like Steve Coogan, are trapped by our own personality failings. So perhaps for all his flaws and faux pas... Alan Partridge has something to teach us. Sometimes the key to getting what you want isn't to ignore your failings, it's to embrace them. Alpha Papa, the Alan Partridge movie, is in cinemas this August. And the last time I checked, the leading man 